as somebody who is finding life a struggle, curses, disappointment, and said, but keep worrying you. If you agree to some of this, thing, there should be something called consistency to break resistance. Because sometimes when you tell the devil to disappear from you, he feels you are joking. So when you make it a hobby of doing this thing consistently, then the enemy knows that you are serious. But I want to share something with you. Today, I only have one or two prayer topics. And so I have in my hands X. Now, as soon as you see X, the first thing you talk about is fetish. Juju. But I have in my hands X. Oh, it's not egg. Okay, I said I have eggs. What will you do with this egg? Who can tell me? Let me, who tell me? You will do what? You fry it. Okay, you do some omelet, yes? It's egg. What will you do with this egg? You get a chicken out of it, okay? You use it for your hair. Okay. You put for a chicken for it to hatch. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about you? Pastries. Okay, what do you use this egg for? You use it for sacrifice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, you use this egg. You get some schnapps and crack it, and you say some incantations, eh, Pastor. You go for hatching. Yes. Who else has something different? One. I don't know if you will cook it for salad. Eggs. This is this is egg. Boil it. Okay, that's yeah. White yolk egg. Yeah. It is good. There is no magic behind this egg. The problem with a lot of us is that we assume or we want to eat things today. I said, your future is not ahead of you. It's being trapped within you. Your future is not ahead of you. It's been trapped within you. Well, the way I'll make it in 2021, I'll make it in 2022. Your tomorrow is not ahead of you. It's inside you. Now, I just showed you an egg. Now, with this egg, somebody decided to cook it. Somebody decided to fry it, omelette. Somebody used it for juju. Somebody decided to use it for what? Omelette. Somebody decided to use it for whatever. Now, but inside this egg lies a lot of eggs. Inside this egg lies a lot of fowls, hen, cock, and a lot of eggs. But you see, in life, how people see you is how they define you. So somebody can see this egg and think about omelette. So somebody can look at you and say, you are omelettable. Somebody can also see you and see that you can be boiled for salad. Somebody can also see you and say, this one is good for juju. <laughs> Somebody can also see you and say, let me sit on you. Or let me put a lot of pressure on you. Let me give a lot of heat so that you can bring out a lot of future. So one thing, if you read our Bible, the Bible said, Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 and 12, the Bible said, God asks Jeremiah, what do you see? So if God was asking you what, God can give all of us an egg. And tomorrow morning, some will eat it. <laughs> some will take time and look for a fowl somewhere and keep it or get an incubator to incubate it. God has given all of us the same amount of capital. But how you see it will determine what you will get tomorrow. 
So Jeremiah was there, and the Bible said, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, what do you see? And he said, ah, I see a branch of almond tree. And he said, you see well. And the way you see, I will hasten my word to perform it. Now, how you see things is very, very important. Now, so if you look again in the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, 9, he said, what this eye has not seen. Now, most people, as soon as you saw this egg, it is an egg. But somebody saw a pottery farm. Somebody saw the hair growing. Somebody saw, you name it, some of you, what you saw, you don't want to say it. You just said, I will hatch it for hatching's sake. In the midst of fasting. <laughs> this is a delicacy. So some people are very sincere. Because the truth is that most of you said, if this egg was yours, you will take it to the poultry farm and hatch it. That if I give it to you now, you will not take it to the poultry farm. You said it. But if I give this egg to you, you will not take it to the poultry farm. What you will do with this egg is exactly what others did. You will eat it. If you look at this, I'm chicken inside. There's a shaking. <laughs> I don't know whether it's anointing that is stirring it. I see some kuchu 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 be inside. <laughs> I don't know. The Holy Ghost is incubating it. Careful, a fowl does not appear in my hand. But the, the truth is that it's easy to know that, okay, if I do this, I will do this, but you won't do it. So we all know that this egg, if you go and put it under a fowl or a hen, is going to hatch for us. But how many of us would truly, sincerely, will go and put this egg under a fowl when I give it to you? The truth is that we know what it will do for us, but we'll eat it. So he said, what the eye have not seen. So you need to look at things not just from the eye point of view. What the ear has not heard. Not just based on what you are hearing. What the heart has not imagined. That is what the Lord has prepared for them that love you. So if God brings you an egg, to you he brought you an egg, but your eye of understanding, your ear, your heart, must understand, know why he brought you the egg. And until you agree with God on why he brought you this egg, the egg will not become a blessing. You, you never understand why God brings money, people, ideas, a dream, a vision, it is up to you to interpret it. You interpret this egg as a poultry farm. This little egg. So the future of a poultry farm is in my hand. I have a full poultry farm in my hand. I also have somebody's hair growing in my hand. Somebody's omelette in my hand. But the most biggest thing to handle is a pottery farm in my hand. How can a pottery farm be in my hand? It can only be seen if you go to verse 10, he said, of 2 Corinthians, he said, but God has revealed them. He doesn't reveal them to your eyes, this is not my eyes. To us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So now, there's a deep things about this egg. Now, in that same way, I can easily, mistakenly leave this egg and the whole future of omelette, poultry farm, is gone. How you handle the things of God tells me how you understand the things of God. How you handle it. How you handle the things of God tells me the future you see in what God has given you. Maybe it's just singing. 
It's just ushering. It's just praying. So let me give you two things about the father of faith, Abraham. Then we will come to this scripture again, verse 10, because that's where I want to pray with. Two things you will see about Abraham is that in Genesis chapter 13, verse 10, when Lot misbehaved, and Abraham said, go your way and go. Let's read what happened. Go. And Lot lifted up his eyes. Some say eyes. And saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord is stretched to Mugunra, in the garden of the, um, of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, you go towards uh, verse 11, please. Then Lord chose for himself what? All the plains of Jordan and Lord journeyed east and they separated from each other. Look at this carefully. Lord saw who asked him to see. He chose to see. Let's look at verse number 14. The same chapter. And the Lord said to Abraham after Lord was separated from him, lift your eyes now. He was also standing where Lot was standing. Lot saw <laughs> place of Jordan. Actually, he saw Sodom and Gomorrah. The same God said, lift your eyes now. Give me verse 10 again. Lot lifted up his eyes. So they all look up. The same philosophy. So we are all seeing an egg. But our interpretation of the future of this egg is different. And our interpretation is sometimes even based on our level of patience. So in verse 14, the Lord said unto Abraham, this time we call him Abraham, we take it that he was not born again. He, God has not yet changed his name to Abraham, the father of faith. The Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord has separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from. Lord looked to. God told him, look from. So now, if you look at this egg, your selfishness will come. But if you look from this egg, you will see omelette. You will see a pottery farm. From many have not looked outside what God has given them. So he said, The spirit searches, yea, what has he said? The deep things of God. He said, Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are now, not what southwest. So God gives you, let's say, a gift of singing. Can you lift your eyes from bridge ministries? To north, south, east, and west. You sell, you say, you say, you sell what? White or kinky. Can you lift your eyes from where you are selling to how would a king eat this food? How will a prince eat this food? How can great people come to this food? See, as long as you are looking at take your, as long as you are looking at it based on your surrounding. I'm from a poor family. You are not looking outside the family. So everybody was asked, or everybody lifted up their eyes to see. But one lifted up his eyes to the product, and Lord lifted up his eyes from the product. And he looked northward, southward, eastward, and westward, and God said, all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. Now because it wasn't God who told a lot to look, God could not give him what he saw. So a lot of the times there's one thing for you to give yourself a dream, a vision. It's one thing for God to give you a dream and a vision. Now that is why today I want us to pray the Bible said, the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God, the Lord, search my heart. And everything you have deposited in me, how can that product go from just ordinary Ghana to the world at large? 
Another scripture which will interest you could be Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. Let's play with Genesis 18, 1, Genesis 19, 1. The same issue happened again. Then the Lord appeared to him by the tablet trees of Mambre as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. Now go to verse 2. Abraham is sitting at the tent door under a tree of Mambre. The, the place is hot by sitting down. Look again. So he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. Now, that's the next one, three. And he said, my Lord, if I have now found favor in your eyes, do not pass on by your servant. Quickly, let's go to the next one. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. I want to look at this thing and I will bring a morsel of bread and you may refresh your heart and after that you may pass by. And as much as you have come to your servant, they said, do as you have said. Look at it, no struggle. No struggle. Verse, the next verse. Verse 6. So Abraham hurriedly in, hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly make ready three measures of fine meat or meal knead it and make cakes now these same three people travel to the, the same lot chapter 19 verse 1 let's look at lot has the same character because he's been following abraham the same thing is happening the same everybody falls down under power people get up some don't get changed people are in church we all hear the same message now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. And Lot was sitting in, at the gate of Sodom. Don't forget, Abraham was also sitting at the door. This guy, he has got, he's sitting at the gates. When Lot, the word sitting, I've taught you on it recently. Sitting simply means it's a permanent disposition. It's a permanent place. Standing means you can go. Now, the Lord saw them, he rose to meet them. Again, like Abraham's own. They all have the same inclination. They all have the same discernment. Them. He rose to meet them and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. The same thing Abraham did. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn in into your servant's house. The same thing Abraham said. And spend the night and wash your feet that you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, no. Ah! When Abraham said, did he say yes? Me too, I am applying the same principle. You say no. Why? <laughs> Jabez prayed prayer. He prospered. Me too, I am praying the prayer. Why am I not prospering? Somebody fasted 21 days. He said he's bought a car. Me, I faster 40. I've been did 52. I've never been bought bicycle. Why? The answer is coming. You should understand that even the issue was that the angels were not sent to Abraham. The angels were sent to Lot to go and to and Gomorrah. But they decided to pass by God's neighbor, friend in the neighborhood. And before they left, they told Abraham that a year by this time you have a child. They visit, you can call a blessing down and somebody will get a blessing and you call the blessing will still not be blessed. You can be the reason why God will decide to make somebody a millionaire. Maybe, oh God, give me money. God, give me money. God knows your heart is greedy. He will give the money to somebody to come and give you your portion. Because if he gives it to you, you will not do as... So somebody will borrow it to you. Even though God can give it to you. I think I'm not teaching well. The same scenario. The same practice. The same hand laying. Sandra, I was supposed to say this. I forgot to say it. 
The Bible said, um, maybe I'll go into it next Sunday. The Bible said, when you lay hands on the sea, they shall recover. Eh? Or when you touch people, they shall recover. So many people that the man of God did not touch me. The man of God did not what? Touch me. There are two kinds of touch. My hand can touch you and your heart can touch me. You don't get it. Okay. Some who have said something that, oh, I've heard this thing before, you have touched my heart. Did the person hold you? No. There's something that you did that touch. So sometimes God doesn't need to stretch his hand towards you. Your attitude touches his heart. And a person, oh God, should I go deep? I didn't want to do this. Should I tell, tell you this? There's a difference for you to know God's hand. There's a difference to you to know God's heart. There's a difference to you to know God's face. When you know God's hand, you only see miracles. But when you, you can do miracles, but you don't know what is the heartbeat of God, so the miracles can destroy you. David was not after God's hands. He knows God can give a house, God can give a day. He was after God's heart. But even though he was after God's, he was a sinner. The only place you can get to that you don't get into sin is when you look at God's face. Because when we see him, we shall be like him. So there are some who want to see his face. Some who want to see his heart. Some who want his touch. Is it clear? Who is, who is not clear here so that I go back? So, some say, so me, I want the hand. Or me, I want the heart. Me, I want his face. The truth is that if we touch his heart, you can have his hand. You can have his face. But many of us just want the hand. So look at Moses. Moses wanted to see the face of God. Remember? And the guy couldn't die. Read your Bible. Moses couldn't die. It is God who took him to the mountain and said, you are going too old. You are, you are still strong. Your, your eyes are not dim. Your body is still whatever. Let's go to the mountain. And God took him away. And when God took him away, the Bible said they went to look for him in the mountain. They couldn't find him. The Bible actually said God buried him there, but they couldn't find him. Why? That is why he appeared at the transfiguration. Because the guy is not dead. Why another that person who saw, who saw God's face was Elijah. If you read the Bible, there was mountain, there was thunder, there was this thing, and the Lord was not in it. A chance of fire came to take him away. He also appeared at transmission. One person who has also been transfigured or taken away who saw God's face is Enoch. Enoch, Genesis chapter 5, I think verse 24 or so. Enoch walked with God. He was not. God took him away. And Enoch is going to be one of the witnesses that will come in the days of the tribulation. What was it about these people? They wanted, these days, nobody was his God's face. You know why God said, the day you see my face, Moses, you shall die. Do you know why? Because you can never see God's face and still be carnal. The only place, the only time we can stop sinning is when we see his face. There's a song that this lady has been singing. What is his name? Victoria or is it say, I want to see your face. I want to touch your grace. I want to know. There is something about God's face. And John said, When we see him, we shall know him. And we shall be like him. So one that prays me kindly, I'm praying. Seriously, is God, I want to see your face. Moses dealt with angels for so long. He told God, I'm tired of angels. Go with us. And God said, I can never go with you. He said, no. Let me see your face. 
Why? Because if you don't know God's face, you never know who is leading you. Enoch walked with God. He went on a long walk and he has never returned. He went into a prayer meeting. He is still praying. He has not returned. We pray two minutes and we are tired. He's, he won't on a prayer walk. He has not returned. So, you, we are asking God, do you want God's hand? Touch me with your hand. That's very good. That is very good. But hear me. What is it about God's heart that God told Samuel, I have found a man after my heart. And in every sin he committed, he was still committed to God. It's not like we sin in our days and three days we have stopped serving God, you know, till we are okay, you know. This was he has, he was after his heart. He is the one who said, Lord, you have examined my heart and you know me, Psalm 138. There's no use pretending you see right through me. There's no place I can hide from you. Is it one? Yeah, it's one three eight one. I can never hide from you. My their heart is such that I can never hide. So, how many of us have ever prayed this prayer before? Lord, touch me with your hands. We pray it every day in our churches. The hand of the Lord came with Elijah. How many of you have ever thought, Lord, let me touch your heart? I've never prayed that prayer. Lord, I want to touch your heart. I've never prayed that prayer. I want to see your face. So, I'm giving you prayer topics to see his face and to touch his heart. You know, there are things people do that touch his heart. I've seen people who, I'm not lying to you, I've seen people who love me unconditionally. And there are things I've done for people that they can't even show me love. And there are some people, what I think I've done for them, I don't even see why they should love me. But they're able to love me because everybody and what you do, that touches their heart. <laughs> what will touch one's heart will not touch another person's heart. Or is it true? It's not true. Somebody here right now, if somebody buys you a car, say, hey, somebody to somebody buys you a car, for what? I want to go to school. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. If somebody tells you that tomorrow you will get pregnant and you take seed, that's what you are looking for. Hallelujah. Your heart has been touched. And the person says, I want you to sow a seed of one million. If you have it, you give it. Because when a person touches your heart, there's nothing the person asks for that you won't give because your heart are all the issues of life. So whoever, that was out of the heart of all the issues of life. So whoever touches God's heart has all of God. Why did David pray and said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. What does he want? Is a heart. So back to this scripture. You can do what everybody is doing. But there are some places others have touched that you have not touched. Do you know why? Let me give an example. What was the difference between everybody listening to me? I want to cry. What was the difference between Abraham and Lot? I'll tell you this. Uh, there is more, but I'll give you only one. The reason why God bypassed was going to visit. Who should I use? God was supposed to visit, let's say me. But I decided to visit Estelle before me. But the main motive was me to see if he will punish me or not punish me. But take your seat. Read your Bible. Genesis 18, the Bible said, God said, Can I hide from Abraham? what I want to do to Sodom and Gomorrah since he's going to be a great man. And number two, 
he commands his children after me. Listen, he doesn't tell his children to go. He commands. There's a difference between, com- you see, children, listen, people say this, I want to be your child. I want to be your child. And I laugh. Children are not told what to do. Children are commanded what to do. And any parent that just tells the children what to do, you are not God's friend. Okay. Let's read. Go to verse 18 first. I think, is it a good message? Yeah, something to set you up throughout the night. Okay, verse 17. And the Lord says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? I'm not going to him. I'm going to his earth. I'm going to his hometown. He goes to bridge, so I'm going to visit bridge ministries on Monday. But even though I'm going to visit bridge ministries on Monday, I can't just visit bridge without first talking to. I can't come to Anya, Sotium, Abilene, name it, without first visiting this person. Why? Look at the criteria God gives. Since Abraham shall surely become great and mighty. The word surely become great and mighty simply means God is saying that no matter what I do, this guy will be great and mighty. So number one, God likes to associate with people who are bent on destined to be great and mighty. Lot was not destined to be great and mighty. Number two, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Again, the future of the world was in him. My quote again. The, your tomorrow, your future is in you. Your future is not ahead of you, it's inside you. Don't tell me I should have thought this thing on Sunday. You are more important than the day. <laughs> See, we shall be a great nation and a mighty nation, and the other nation are blessed is because of him. Because bridge ministries depends on this person. I can't hide it. So look at the next verse. Oh, the next verse, 19. For I've known him. Listen, God didn't know Lord. But I have known him. In order that he may command his children. He may command. Abraham was someone who commands him. Go to church. Pray. Do this. You have to do that. Isaac, lie there. I have to kill you. My little girl, I, I do that to her. She will say, can I play with my phone? I said, we are going to pray. Initially, when I took the phone, she became very quiet and whatever. But lately, at least, at least for the last two weeks, she will come and say, Daddy, let's play Kadosh. You read? Yeah. Oh, she will say Kadosh. Now she herself understands that when she sees my leg shaking, it is time for Kadosh. And when I sing it, she will put the phone down and start singing the Kadosh with me. Why? Because it first has to come as a command. He said he may command his children and his household after him. So it's not like you, 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 you command your children and you leave the maid. Everybody who says he's around you must obey. Because let me tell you, if you become a Melonia, people around you are affected. If you become poor, people around you are affected. One person in your house can stop a blessing. And one person in your house can bring a blessing. A maid in the house of Naaman was the reason why Naaman was healed. A maid. It was the maid who said there's a prophet in Israel. Am I teaching? Now, and they may keep the way of the Lord he, to do righteousness and just that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. In other words, the people who were around Abraham was one of the reasons why God would have to fulfill his promise. Now let me ask you, the people who are around you, 
Will they help God to fulfill his promise? The people you call my best friend, my bestie, my this, my dad, they will not. So, the reason why God said, I am coming to this town on earth, but let me visit Abraham first. If God decides to come to your neighborhood, would he visit you first? What was he coming to do? He told Abraham, I have heard the crowd, Sodom and Gomorrah, that they are very wicked people. They are practicing lesbianism, gayism, and whatever. So he said, I'm coming to see if it's true, so I will judge it. He said, it. The said no, no. I'm coming to, I'm, I'm not going to destroy them. That's not why I'm coming. I'm coming to find out if it is true. But in trying to find out, Abraham, I want to say hello to you. May God say hello to you this week. <laughs> My prayer is that this week, God will give you a dream about him. Oh, amen. So let's jump to, let me conclude. I don't want to go too far with you on this. Because, um, when I want to talk about the face and the, even I'm not talking about the feet of God already. <laughs> the face. and So if someone say, if I want to live holy, which part of God should you see? I just thought you, his face. His face. When you see him, you change naturally. If you want his blessing, where do you go for? His hand. If you want to win a war, where do you go for? His feet. There's nowhere God will step in a place and you lose a battle. Even to Joshua, you, where your soul steps, you take over. But if you want all of it, go for the heart. You always do things to touch God's heart. If I'm Abraham, I'm David, and I want to give God ten thousand dollars, and God say you're a bad person, you can't do it. You say, God, thank you. Let somebody do it. Let me back. You say, God, I can't do it. Barbara is my daughter. Barbara, I dash you 10,000. Go and give it to God. He said, God, if me I can't build, I'll give it to my son Solomon. So you put everything down for Solomon. Solomon shall build. He, if it is you, God said, oh, keep it. Say, <laughs> okay, God, I thank you very much. How many of you know that we like, that's what we do? Yeah, it's an opportunity not to do it. He said, God, you said my hand is blood, so I can't build your temple. Oh, okay. Solomon. Solomon didn't buy one thing for the temple. Everything for the temple, David provided for it before dying. One of the things you must do as a believer is always find a way of touching God's heart. Let me ask you a simple question. How many of you are there and someone has touched your heart before? When a person touches your heart, can you harm the person? May we find a way of touching God's heart. And that was David. David can be bad. Take it or leave it. But never when it comes to God. He said one day that I hate them that hate you. Wait a minute. That extreme. You will hate those who hate God. He said, he said anything that displeases you, God, it displeases me. I love them that love you and I hate them that hate you. There is no way. Let me even give an example. There is no way. Let's take it that I'm there and somebody's fighting me. No, for you from nowhere comes and beats the person. That's what I didn't tell you to beat the person. It should have been my fight. He said, that I don't want to see anybody insult you. I don't want to see anybody. When people say this to you, realize that it's a way. He has not given me $1 million. But he has touched you. 
somebody is blaspheming against God and you pass by. You, you, I won't pass by. You are talking against God. You, you say what? Take your seat. I thought you found I would hate those. I hate those who hate you. Actually, he said I hate them with perfect hatred. For I want to use the word I hate them with perfect hatred, not partial hatred. I hate those who hate you with perfect hatred. I didn't know there was perfect hatred until David mentioned it. May God pass by your neighborhood this week. All this week, all our prayer we are going to pray is to want to touch his face. When I was talking to somebody and the person, a child, the child said, somebody, one, I don't want to mention it, one of church members, their children, that they cannot touch you. I said, oh, yes. He said, no, I want to touch your face. I understand the child. Not knowing the, there's a picture of me in their house, and the child has been touching the picture every day. And the child can't wait for the day he touches the real person. He wants to see if the thing he's been feeling on the picture okay, is the same thing that is physical. Read it. I hate them. No. With perfect hatred. Now, why does he hate? Can we go to I, I hate them that hate you. So, going further, Lot is doing the... You see, the thing is that you realize that both Lot and Abraham, they've, by, by, by that vet, um, system of just following Abraham, a Ab, Lord can also descend and see an angel. Can see the favor of God. Can see the face of God. Can see the glory of God. But even though he is doing the same thing Abraham is doing, he was not getting the same result. Abraham sees the angels and said, come to my house. And they come. They leave a blessing behind. Lot has not been told. Let's go back to Genesis 19. Lot has not been told. He also descends. You see, I've seen people who can descend miracles coming their way, and they don't get it. They can sense that this is their week. Am I teaching well? I want to provoke you today for the week fast. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lord also was sitting... Look at this one. Abraham's own, it was hot. This Abraham's own, it is evening. What will Abraham be doing in the hot sun outside Ojem Farmer? What made him come out? The heat in the room. The pressure of famine. The pressure of the economy. Why was Lot at the city gate in the evening? The motive is not the same. There's no sun. There's no trouble. Because as an elder, people come to him for counsel. He was a big man. Because he was in the city. Abraham was still in the village. Now the two angels um, came to Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them exactly like Abraham did. He bowed himself with his face towards the ground, exactly like Abraham did in verse 18. And he said, Hear now, my Lord. The same way Abraham said, Please turn into your servant's house and spend the night. Look, this guy wanted all night. Isn't it interesting? Abraham has had afternoon lunch with him. This man has ability to have an all night. And wash your feet, then you may rise early and go on your way. He doesn't even know they were coming to him. He doesn't even sense they were coming to him. Something must come to you for permanency. You are introducing a way out for that thing to disappear. It was dispatched from heaven just for you. 
Your attitude and everything is right, but your weddings are wrong. And they said, no, but we spend the night in the open square. They both said, we prefer to be in the market in the night than to even enter your room. Why would God prefer not to enter somebody's heart? Or prefer to hang around in a church than to make your body his temple? But hear me. Everybody hear me. You can be a good person. But when you are surrounded with people who are evil, you might not have certain presence around you. Let's move on. But he insisted. May you be insistent. The word insistent is very. You some people pray one prayer. It didn't work. They say, I'll pray it again. He insisted strongly. He was persistent about it. Most often, there are some people, they don't have to struggle with God for God to visit them. But some of us, <laughs> we must insist. We must insist. God, you can't leave me home. I will chase you. God, I'm not allowing you to do it. I know I've done wrong. I know I don't deserve it. I know your mercy is so big, but you want to take me out of your mercy. I am part of this. Why? At this point, what is God listening to? He's watching to see if your heart wants him. Because your environment, your body language, other things from heaven shows that you are not prepared for him. So at this rate, how you, you have not been paying your tithe. You have not been faithful to God. You are asking God for money. Something must prove to God that you have changed. It's not only with God. You see, now I've changed. My life is changed. Now you see, God, give me another chance. I'll prove to you. No. You don't do like that. You sow a seed. You give an offering. You start coming to church. You start getting your own. Why is God looking at that? Then he's seeing that now. This person is not ready for me. Then he said, but his sister strongly. So they turned into him. And entered his house. Why did they enter his house? It is the what? Persistence. Consistency. If it won't work, I don't understand why it won't work. It must work. It's got to work. People pray and they have answers. People give their offering, they sow their seed, they get breakthrough. I don't understand why I'm not getting my breakthrough. I need to get my breakthrough. Then he made them a feast. Uh, look at it. The guy was rich. He made feast. Abraham's place, they cooked. <laughs> a feast. And baked on living bread and they ate. He knew the kind of meal also to do. Let me tell you this. Someone can give one million dollars. Someone can give two Ghana cities. They are all an offering. But God would love to stay with the one who gave two Ghana cities. The one who gave one million dollars. Why? Hearts. But he is, he, bro, if you ask something, he said, or oh, what? That they lay down. They, no, insisted. Good. <laughs> but he insisted strongly, so they turned to him and entered the house. Then he made them a feast and baked living bread and they ate. Please, the next verse, verse 4. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Now, before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. Look at this. Evil men know. When good things come to your house. You can recognize the opportunity. But as soon as you grab it, others begin to see the importance of what you grab. And that's where the real battle begins. As soon as you discover what can change your life, all of a sudden people begin to use you to fight you. You 
you come to a church, you realize that this is Bridge Ministries, this is a church that can help you. That's why you can easily begin to have weird dreams about a church. Funny dreams. So let's go on. Then he caught Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them to us that we may know them carnally. Hear me. Lord has stayed with these people for years. His children, daughters have grown there. They have never decided this thing. Are you here with me? They have never decided to know Lord Canali. Certain attacks only come to you because of what has entered your life. How can one of a a spirit of lesbianism and gayism is after you? It's not after you, it's after what you have. It's after what will save your soul. Sometimes, as soon as you get closer to God, evil desire, carnality, out of nowhere, begins to come into your mind, your body, and your soul. You are like, I thought I would fast. I think I'm not preaching somebody here. Is it true or is it not true? I, I thought I'm fasting. Wait a minute. Then let me stop the fast. That should have welcomed these people here. The people said, we want to. They are not interested in you. They are interested in the people who have visited your life, who are in to determine your destiny. Sometimes somebody who just became your friend can make you have an enemy. Is it true or is it not true? But you know that this friend is the one who is helping you to serve God. He is the one who is helping you to make it in life. Please give me time because there's no time. Me, I can teach. Uh, seven what? Fifty. Ah, I was going to talk for only two minutes with my ex. Those of you who missed the ex. Now, what did Lord do? Lord said, never make that mistake. I'm go- never compromise with evil or on evil. Lord said, I will give you my children so that you will let my visitors go. The enemy knows what it wants. There is nothing you give that will change what the enemy wants. Let me explain. Can I have all of you attention? Some of you are trying to sleep. I don't know whether it's the weather or the fasting. Or both. Sometimes you think that the enemy is after you. Think that, okay, Sadia, me so I won't go to church. So that the enemy or this thing will. That is not what you want. So it is your finances that is after. So you think by not going to church, the devil will leave your finances and you make money. No. It is your finances he's after. There is no you think you will give to the devil that will make the devil stop following you. Because there's something the devil is after. Most of what is he after? Your soul. Let me say it better. Your heart. Satan can also touch heart. He can make somebody love you so much that you don't care sinning. I think I'm not preaching. <laughs> the truth is that very soon everything lot you own is going to be destroyed. God is not after what you have. He is also after your heart. Because if he has your heart, he can give you everything you lost. Somebody asked me a question that how did Lot, they said Lot's wife turned back. I can't even remember the story. So I won't go into it. Became salt. Why? So somebody told me that how did Lot get to know 
that his wife had become salt. And I said, the first person to leave the city was the wife. So he was ahead. Don't be... <laughs> let's go. Over here, let's go. If I'm going with you and you are ahead of me, before you will never turn to salt. That's when I'll see, before you turn, let me see. That's when I'll see that he has turned to salt and I move on. Now, the angels never visited Lot's wife. It's not Lot's wife who discovered the angel. It was Lot, and the instructions was given to Lot. Sometimes somebody has received the instruction. Most of you don't even know the full detail of the instruction. Follow the leader. Look, can I tell you something? If Lot's wife was working with Abraham, sorry, Lot, and he had tried to look back, he would have helped her. She was going. Sometimes people hear things, and they are so much in a hurry. As soon as they hear, hey, praise the Lord, zeal, with that knowledge can be frustrating. So zealous. She's so excited. So she saw the angels blind all the people. Blind them. She didn't have time to think. That's my property. So she leaves, and as she's going, she's remembering the TV. Flat screen. Fire rice and chicken. So my boyfriend will not have sex with me again. Who hold me in the cold? Hey. So these days I have to walk to town. When I have to go to town, uh, nobody will give me a car. I have to pick Uber. Should I call this guy once and let him come and pick me? I think I'm not preaching well. <laughs> I think I'm talking to somebody's story right now. <laughs> only, 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 hey, so I've left all this thing. Goodbye, well, I've made up my mind. No, God, you let me just do one, just one. If I just do last one, you see, I didn't do this star when I was in the world. I, I didn't go to the club when I was in the world. I didn't visit this when I was in the world. There were certain things. Last, this sister was preaching, and she said that she did this and did, and God, you forgave. Me, I didn't do any of them when I was in the world. So, Lord, let me just go and do one. Now, your face, that was facing God, your deliverance. Your back is turned against your assignment, and you are facing your destruction. Sometimes it's good to have a friend who's so so fast. So that when you're about to break, you tell him, my friend, let's continue. When you want to sin, you tell him, my friend, let's not sin. When you're about to misbehave, you tell him, I think we can do it. Yeah, it's only three days to go, let's go. Only two hours, then it'll be six o'clock, let's go. But you are alone. It is not, when will it be six (laughs) o'clock? I think I'm preaching to somebody here at all. Can you be surprised that love's children did not look back? Interesting. Why didn't they look back? They were admiring their father. How did they were admiring their father? Because they later slept with their father by getting him drunk. They were thinking about one thing. So now who make us pregnant? And when they looked into the future, there was no male. But you see, there was no male because, Lord, you didn't teach your children that you have an uncle by name, Abraham, who has children. So the people felt they were alone. Sometimes, no matter the department you belong to, There comes a time that you must know that no matter where I am, if my fellow brother, my fellow sister needs help, 
I must be the one to lift the person up. Because if you allow the person not to be lifted up, an unbeliever will do it for you. I think I need to end. So I end on this again. Can you put my coat on the screen? Those of you who came late, what will you do with this egg? What will you do with this egg? Let's talk fast. You cook. You cook and eat if you're hungry. What will you do? You cook and eat. Fry it. Fry. You hate for it to hatch and have a poultry farm. This is food they don't want a poultry farm. <laughs> Your future is not ahead of you. It's inside you. Oh, take your seat, please. So, my beginning scripture, what eyes have not seen, your mind told you, boil it. Your mind told you, fry it. What eyes have not, ears have not heard. What a heart has not imagined. That's what God has prepared. God has a purpose for this egg. And that purpose, verse 10 says that it's only the spirit of God that can reveal the deep things. What is in this egg can only be revealed by the spirit of God. Your spirit will tell you fright. Why? Your appetite for now will always describe what you want. Somebody asked me, uh, why am I so aggressive about something? I said, it is during this church building that I got to know people's hearts. Yeah. You never know hearts until opportunities are given to people. People can pray, Lord, give me money. And when the money comes, then you know what the person really wants to do with money. But it's not true. Do you know that you can get money and forget all your vows and your promises to God? And that's when you remember that you don't have a wardrobe. So let's be on our feet. Verse 10. God has revealed them to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Now, we are going to pray our first prayer. I only have some small prayers for you. I said, I'm going to provoke you. This week, we want to have the heart of God, the face of God, and maybe the hand or the feet. But we are going to pray. How many of you don't speak in tongues? Let me show you up. Because if you don't speak in tongues today, you'll not be happy. You don't speak in tongues. You don't. So everybody speaks in tongues. Who doesn't? One, two, three. Okay. okay. You say you don't speak in tongues. Now, those of us who don't speak in tongues, you are going to pray the Lord, reveal yourself to me. Reveal my life to me. Reveal my identity to me. Reveal your assignment to me. I hope you understand me. Now, you that speak in tongues, Romans 8 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our infirmities. For we don't know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which can never be uttered. We're going to speak in tongues of the Lord. I don't even know myself. I don't even understand myself. I don't even know what I want. Inside me is my future. But how can this future come up? Maybe I'll fry my future. I'll boil my future. I will dash my future. I will crash my future. But this future, Holy Spirit, reveal it to me. One of the things I do, when people come around me, I find out, God, why did you bring this person? That is all. 
That's why you put last long around me. Because when you don't know why a person is around you, the person will be useless around you. This egg, if you don't fry it fast, if you don't cook it fast, if you don't hatch it fast, it will get spoiled. But God didn't want it to get spoiled. A poultry farm can end if I don't know how to handle this egg. A whole future where if I've had a poultry farm, there is nothing wrong with eating an egg. There's nothing wrong with boiling or frying it, making omelet with it. But there's everything wrong when you don't know why God brought this egg. Because when you have a pottery farm, one day you eat an egg. <laughs> Is it true? One day you, you do five eggs, chibo, and you eat. And that day you will not say that, oh, this is a pottery farm. <laughs> you never say that this is a pottery farm. So whatever gifts, talent, abilities God has given you, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to show you the future of that thing, when you know your future, you know what not to do today. Let me tell you, if you know you marry a president one day or you are the president of a country one day, you be careful how you live your life today. 